I completed, or I'm pretty sure I completed design of the, the first official architecture that isn't just a prototype. Uh, although that stack over there is uh, currently going unused, but that's fine. It's just a, a separate module that can be optionally plugged in. Uh, but besides from that, uh, I added this positive flag to complement the zero uh, carry and negative flags so that all of these values are immediately accessible uh, to, from the accumulator or to the accumulator. I mean the control unit, not the accumulator. That would be this part. Uh, I also made uh, another test program. This one does the same thing as, I believe, uh, my favorite test program, which is starting from 5 and decrementing and then repeating that uh, as it hits 0, that is. I actually figured out what the problem I was having last time was. It was that I was using the wrong flag because uh, because I had them mixed in memory, in my memory. And so this is what it looks like in operation now, finally. I get that out of the way so that you can see. There. And so now you can see each uh, instruction fetch uh, sends out these two bits the same each time because it's reading the each even and odd. Uh, although you can see that this one is oscillating between uh, the main fetch and actually uh, the operand location. How I have it handling the operands right now is uh, each instruction is formed of one uh, opcode which correlates to uh, the first four bits being a module and the second four bits being uh, an action that the module can take uh, such as incrementing or uh, pushing onto the stack or uh, taking a value from IO bus. Although I have it set up so that all general uh, memory that is presented to the accumulator is not considered separate modules but actually an extension of the ALU so that uh, the only control code that any of the memory takes is uh, the address is uh, directly from the accumulator so that none of the memory can actually have special functions unless you customize that yourself about the module because usually they don't need special functions except for the stack. Yeah, it has you know, some things it would need uh, typically. If you would want to pop off of the stack that would require a special instruction uh, although writing to the stack you can just push to the stack now that's a simple hot wire to do. Uh, but also, as you can see, there's some really bad latency in this RAM. And because of that, I actually had a genius idea. If I were to turn this from an imperative processor to a functional processor using a, hardwire for, a hardwired form of some kind of machine code fourth language, uh, I could eliminate at least half of this RAM uh, and also incorporate this stack into the ALU itself. And that would allow me to, instead of having one uh, in a pointer to an, uh, an op, uh, operand like I have right now, because uh, post seeding, uh, post fixing every opcode, there's a pointer to which address the operand is in instead of the actual operand being there uh, immediately uh, because I want uh, multiple instructions to be able to refer to the same operand. But I've actually come up with the idea that instead of this three-part system for each non-unary operation, I could actually have uh, the RAM only store opcodes and the operands would only be stored in something like uh, the stack here so that it would uh, be a stack based processor and so that way uh, the only th weird thing you would need to do is pushing immediate values onto the stack like uh, uh, say you want to push five 
the value 5 to the stack immediately. That would require one opcode and uh, one a sort of instruction built into the function in RAM uh, that would be the actual number. Uh, but I think that's getting ahead of things for right now. I'm just uh, really happy that this processor functions. Uh, I'm actually also going to be experimenting to see what el other things I can demonstrate uh, for this processor are. So, I did something fun this time. You know that IO bus? Well, now it's finally functional as an actual IO bus. So watch this. I have it uh, programmed into a RAM that it should decrement and then write to uh, the first address of the out bus and repeat this. It doesn't uh, actually write to the out bus until it decrements the first time, so it counts from 4 to 0. So it does actually write 5 times, but it's uh, sort of n minus 1 each time, n being uh, the, the start value. And technically setting the accumulator to 5 to begin with is Ah, uh, sorry, I'm back now. I noticed a pair of bagels uh, trying to lurk around in the halls, uh, trying to sneak past me, but fortunately I caught them just in time, and now I can eat them. Uh, but, as I was saying, actually, what was I saying? Well, uh... Never mind, I suppose, then. I'm going to see if I can work on that new processor design I just had an idea for. Now this one, uh, I'm probably finished with now.